chapter 25. And Samuel died, and Israel gathered themselves together, and lamented him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose, and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Maon, whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great, and he had three thousand sheep, and a thousand goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And the woman was of good understanding and of a beautiful form, but the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep, and David sent ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus you shall say, All hail, and peace be both unto you, and peace be to your house, and peace be unto all that you have. And now I have heard that you have shearers. Your shepherds have now been with us, and we did them no hurt, neither was there aught missing unto them all the while they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will tell you. Wherefore let the young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a good day. Give, I pray you, whatsoever cometh to your hand unto your servants and to your son David. And when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all the words in the name of David, and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David, and who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers and give it unto men of whom I know not whence they are? So David's young men turned on their way and went back and came and told according to all these words. And David said unto his men, Gird you on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword, and David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David about four hundred men, and two hundred abode by the baggage. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he flew upon them. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything as long as we went with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us both by night and by day, all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider what you will do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his house, for he is such a base fellow that no one can speak to him. Then Abigail made haste, and took two hundred loaves, and two bottles of wine, and five sheep ready-dressed, and five measures of parched corn, and a hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and laid them on asses. And she said unto her young men, Go on before me, behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband, Nabal. And it was so, as she rode on her ass, and came down by the covert of the mountain that, behold, David and his men came down towards her, and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that the fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed by all that pertained unto him, and he hath returned me evil for good. God do so unto the enemies of David, and more also, if I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light so much as one male. And when Abigail saw David, she made haste, and alighted from her ass, and fell before David on her face, and bowed down to the ground. And she fell at his feet, and said, Upon me, my lord, upon me be the iniquity, and let your handmaid, I pray you, speak in your ears, and hear you the words of your handmaid. Let not, my lord, I pray you, regard this base fellow, even Nabal, for his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and churlishness is with him. But I, your handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom you did sin. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, seeing the Lord hath withholden you from blood guiltlessness, and from finding redress for yourself with thine own hand, 
Now therefore let your enemies, and them that seek evil to my Lord, be as Nabal. And now this present which your servant has brought unto my Lord, let it be given unto the young man that follow my Lord. Forgive, I pray you, the trespass of your handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil is not found in you all your days. And though man be risen up to pursue you, and to seek your soul, yet the soul of my Lord shall be bound in a bundle of life with the Lord your God. And the souls of your enemies, them shall he sling out, as from the hollow of a sling. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord shall have done to my Lord, according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you, and shall have appointed you prince over Israel, that this shall be no stumbling block unto you, nor offense of heart unto my Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause, or that my Lord hath found redress for himself. And when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember your handmaid. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who, who sent you this day to meet me. And blessed be your discretion, and blessed be you, that you have kept me this day from blood guiltlessness, and from finding redress for myself with mine own hand. For in very deed as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, who hath withholden me from hurting you, except you had made haste and come to meet me, Surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light such, so much as one male. So David re received of her hand that which she had brought him, and she said unto her, Go up in peace to your house. See, I have hearkened to your voice, and I have accepted your person. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king, and Nabal's heart was merry with him. For he was very drunken, wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. And it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, that his wife told him these things, and his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And it, became, and it came to pass about ten days after that, the Lord smote Nabal, so that he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and hath kept back his servant from evil. And the evil doing of Nabal hath the Lord returned upon his own head. And David sent and spoke concerning Abigail to take her to him to wife. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spoke unto her, saying, David hath sent us unto you to take you to him to wife. And she arose and bowed down with her face to the earth and said, Behold, your handmaid is a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. And Abigail hastened and arose and abode upon an ass and with five damsels of hers that followed her. And she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel, and they became both of them his wives. Now Saul had given Michal, his daughter, David's wife, to Palti, the son of Laish, who was of Galim. Okay, let's go back to verse 1. Now, see, we have a story just stuck in there today. The, uh, in this chapter, it has nothing to do with the chapter before. And uh, we'll start with verse 1. And Samuel died, and all Israel gathered themselves together, and lamented him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose, and went down to the wilderness of Paran. So Samuel has died. The, he was the last judge, and he was the one who would appoint the king. Samuel means hears God, the one who hears God. And he's died, and we'll see that they wasn't... Uh, there wasn't no 40 days of lamenting him like there was for Sam, for um, Moses. They simply buried Samuel in his house at Ramal, this Ramal meaning the high place. And David arose and went to the wilderness of Paran. And Paran means the place of cave. Verse 2, And there was a man in Ma'on whose possessions were in Carmel, 
and the man was very great, and he had three thousand sheep and a thousand goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. So now that we were talking about a certain man, we're going to find out his name in a minute, from Maon, and Maon is the dwellings. We remember Maon from an earlier place, and these dwellings is in a plural sense where it's a cohabitation where to cohabitate and his possessions are in Carmel and Carmel is the garden land and he was he had a lot of substance so he was a rich man and he had 3,000 sheep and these 3,000 is the complete fulfillment and the thousand goats that he had is this divine fulfillment of of God and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. So he had brought his sheep to Carmel to shear the wool off of them. Three, now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And the woman was of good understanding and of a beautiful form. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. So this man's name from my own is Nabal. And the ball simply means fool. He's a foolish man. And his wife's name is Abigail. And Abigail means father is joy. And the verse teaches us that she is of good understanding. So she has a good understanding. She is a, a, a good person and a beautiful form. She is a very pretty woman. But the man, he was churlish or foolish in his doings. And he was not of a good spirit of person. He was evil in his doings. And this is means he would take advantage of people. And he was kind of mean towards people. And he was of the house of Caleb. And we remember who Caleb. He was one of them. One of the two who did not turn on God when the children come up out of Egypt. And went in to possess the land. And Caleb means dog. For and David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep. So now words come to David. He's hiding out in the wilderness. The wilderness means the place where the words drive out or the truth comes in. And Nabal was shearing his sheep. This fool was shearing his sheep or fleecing the sheep. Five. And David sent ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name so David's going to send these young men to Carmel to Nabal to say hey look David has sent us and these men are there are ten of them and ten is going to represent the law six and thus shall you say all hell and peace be both unto you and peace be to your house and peace be to unto all you have so David's telling them how they should what they should say to Nabal when they get there He's telling him to greet him with peace, declare peace unto him. 7. And now I have heard that you have shearers, your shepherds have now been with us. And we did them no hurt, neither was there anything missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. So David's telling his young men, now tell him that, you know, we hear that you're shearing your sheep down here. And look, your shepherds have been up there with us, and we have protected them. 8. Ask your young men, and they will tell you, Wherefore, let the young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a good day. Give, I pray you, whatsoever cometh to your hand, unto your servants, and to your son David. So David's men are going to tell Nabal that, Hey, look, we protected your men, and when anything came out against them, we would fight for them, or we would protect them, and then they've been not missed anything since they hung around us in Carmel. Now, did Nabal ask David to protect his, his shepherds? No, Nabal did not. And David was acting in a good gesture. Nine, and when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all the words in the name of David, and they ceased. So they've come now to Nabal, and they've told Nabal exactly what David told them, that, you know, your 
we heard you were shearing your sheep down here, and your shepherds have been with us, and we've been protecting them now for these many days, and they've brought the sheep in to be sheared, and anything you've got that could help us out would surely be appreciated if you would let us have it, and David, your son, and ten, and Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. 11. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed from my shears and give it unto the men of whom I know not where they are? So Nabal basically tells David or David's men, Hey, who is David? Who is David? And who is this son of Jesse? I don't know. He has no meaning around here. Should I take now the the bread and the water and the flesh that I've killed from my shears and give it unto the men? And I don't know who they are or where they come from. So he's basically just telling them, I don't know who what you're talking about. I don't owe you nothing. And he made no deal with nobody. And is Nabal right? He's absolutely correct. He didn't make. Now David acted out of a kind gesture of his own hand and showed kindness to somebody. Now he's expecting some kind of payment for it. And Nabal's saying, I don't know what you're talking about. But now, Nabal should have realized that this gesture had been extended and said, yes, well, you're right, and, and gave them something for their trouble in, in, a, in a gesture of grace. Twelve, so David's young men turned on their way and went back and came and told it, David according to these words. So David's men have gone back now and they've told David exactly what Nabal said that he wasn't going to get nothing he didn't recognize him and he didn't hire him 13 and David said unto his men gird you on every man his sword and they girded on every man his sword David also girded on his sword and there went up after David about 400 men and 200 abode with the baggage so David this made David angry David put on his sword He's got his men all girded up with their swords. They're set for to go battle. And we, about 400 men are going to go with David. And this four being the work, a hundred. And this represents the work of God. And a hundred being the judgment. So this is going to be God's judgment. And these 200, God wants you to witness his judgment. 14, but one of the young men told Abigail... Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he flew upon them. So one of the young men that's overheard this conversation has come and told Abigail, Nabal's wife, and that, hey, David has sent some messengers down here to talk to your Nabal, and he's jumped all over them. Of course, Nabal really has just spoke straight and sternly with them. 15, but the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we went with them when we were in the fields. So, if not, Nabal would have took time to talk to these servants, as, da as David's men had asked him to do, he would have found out, see, that this is true, these, they had protected them many times in the field, and, uh, Maybe a form of gratitude was uh, expectable. 16. They were a wall unto us, both by night and by day, all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. So they had protected them, and, and the servants telling Abigail this. 17. Now therefore know and consider what you will do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his house, for he is such a base fellow that no one can speak to him. So the servant's basically telling Abigail, now what are, you what are you going to do about this? Because Nabal, the David's men are going to go tell David, and he's going to come back and against Nabal, your, our master. And he's such a hard-headed that no one can talk to him. 18, then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves, two bottles of wine, five sheep ready-dressed, and five measures of parched corn, and a hundred clusters of raisins, 
and two hundred cakes of figs and laid them on asses. So now, now Abigail, she's hurried up and she's took a two hundred loaves of bread. And once again, we're getting ready to witness the judgment of God, the judgment of the word. And two bottles of wine witness this pouring out of the spirit of God. And five sheep ready dressed. And this is the grace to God's flock. And these five measures, this is the grace that is measured out. All right, and these hundred clusters of raisins. Once again, God says, judgment. This is God's judgment. And we should witness God's judgment. 19. And she said unto her young men, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. So she's loaded up all these victuals upon her asses. And she's told her servants, Now go on before me. And she didn't tell her husband of nothing what was going on. And it was so, 20, as she rode on her ass and came down by the covert of the mountain that, Behold, David and his men came down towards her and she met them. So she's hurried up and took all this stuff to go meet David. And she's come around on the side of the mountain where no one can see her. And there was David and his men coming down. 21. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him. And he hath returned me evil for good. So David's been thinking to himself that everything he's done to help this guy out has been for nothing. I guess all in the while, maybe expecting something for the good deeds he was doing. 22. God do so unto the enemies of David, and more also, if I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light, so much as one male. And we'll see David is saying that if... If he don't repay this, what this man's done to him, by the morning light, that God should do this unto David's enemies. Not to David, but to his enemies. Because David is smart enough to know that we don't, we, you don't wish bad upon yourself. 23, and when Abigail saw David, she made haste and alighted from her ass and fell down before David on her face and bowed down to the ground. So, as soon as David is seen by Abigail. She jumps off her, her donkey and she runs up to David and bows herself to the ground to submit herself in humility. 24, and she fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me be this iniquity and let your handmaid, I pray you, seek, speak in your ears and hear you the words of your handmaid. So she's fell now down at David's feet, and she's saying to David, Let this evilness be upon me that you've come for. She knows what his business is, see. And she's saying, Let this be upon me, upon your handmaid. I pray you, and now let me speak to you, and listen to what I got to say. 25. Let not, my lord, I pray you, regard this base fellow, even the ball. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and churlishness is with him. But I, your handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom you did sin. So Abigail's telling David, listen, don't regard this fellow Nabal. He's a fool. Just like his name says he's a fool, he is a fool. And, and evilness is the way he works. But I am your handmaid, and I didn't get to... These, hear the words of these young men which you have sent. It's 26. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, seeing the Lord hath withholden you from the blood guiltlessness, and from finding redress for yourself with your own hand, now therefore let your enemies and them that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. And so Abigail's telling David, now look, now, God has kept you from this evilness that you was going to do. Surely as God lives and you're here living today, God has done this. Because this is, this is 
be senseless for you to come down and kill Nabal for this and that you would find redress in your own for yourself in your own hand see that you go and pay back this that you think somebody owes you when God will do this for you so now let, let your enemies those who come against you those that seek your soul be as Nabal so let them be like fools these ones who come and seek your soul who seek to destroy you like just like Saul's been trying to find David hunting him out wherever he is every day looking for his soul to kill him see let God work this deed for you you speak the truth teach the word and let God go before you in this understanding and fight your battles before you let your enemies be made fools before God and we'll find out this is exactly what happens and this this judgment these two bottles of wine this the witness this judgment of the spirit being poured out and this is the spirit of the end time that's poured out on all the world the spirit of drunkenness the spirit of of confusion and that's exactly what we're talking about. Like God, God is fighting these battles for us. God has done, took the earth in confusion. They've made for themselves idols. They've went chasing after everything but the commandments of God and that which shall they live. And now we find out society testifies of this. 27, and now this present which my servant hath brought unto my Lord, let it be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. So Abigail saying, now all this that I have, all this that I bring to offer, let this be given to your young men for payment for that which they have done. Forgive, I pray you, 28, the trespass of your handmaid, for the Lord will certainly not make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and, an e and his evil is not found in you all your days. So Abigail's basically telling David now forgive me because I've come out like this and done and presented myself to you like this but God shall surely make your house a sure place because you fight the battles of God and that evil is not found in you all your days she's telling David now that God's going to make his house a sure because he fights the battles of God see now and God's trying to teach David something He's trying to teach him that we don't take judgment for ourselves. We don't exact judgment out for ourselves, but we exact judgment for God. For God, do we exact our judgment? The word, the law, is about God. It's not about nothing or anybody else. He give it to you for your own good. And when you don't obey it, it'll be for your own bad. 29. And though man be risen up to pursue you and seek your soul, yet the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord your God, and the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out as from the hollow of a sling. And this is a promise God has made to those that follow his law, that follow the commandments of God, that follow the word of God. He's took them up in a bundle of life, and all these others, he's going to sling them out as he slung them out from the hollow of his hand. And this we'll remember is Kela slung forth those that have slung forth. 30, and it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and shall have appointed you prince over Israel. 31, that this shall not be a stumbling block unto you nor offense of heart unto my Lord, neither that you have shed blood without cause, or that my Lord hath found redress for himself. And when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember your handmaid. So she's telling David now, let, let this come to pass when you have later on, when you've become the king of Israel, that this deed you coming down to, to take, this matter into your own hands to kill Nabal won't become a stumbling block. For this would be senseless blood you would have shed. God didn't want you to come down here and do this. But God wants you to let him fight the battles for you. 
And you're going to tell everybody that, hey, God's going to go before me. God's going to fight these battles for me. I'm going to obey the law. I'm going to stay in the commandments of God. And God's going to fight these battles before me. 32, And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me. And David realizes by the words that Abigail's told him that God has sent her and she represents the, the, she is the wife of Nabal, this fool, the one who doesn't listen to God. 33, and blessed be your discretion, and blessed be you, that you have kept me this day from blood guiltlessness, and from finding redress for your, myself with mine own hand. And David's telling her, blessed because of your discretion, you have come and have stopped me from going down and doing this horrible act, killing the ball, seeking vengeance for myself when vengeance belongs to God. 34, for in very deed as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, who hath withholden me from hurting you, except you had made haste and come to meet me. Surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light so much as one mouth. David saying, as truth is, as sure as God is, lives, you have come and stopped me from hurting your, you. And unless you had done this, I would have not left one thing that Nabal had by morning light. He was come, he, David was come down to destroy Nabal and everything that Nabal had. He was vengeful. And he was acting out of vengeance and, and great anger. And God had sent Abigail to stop David. And David realizes that God had sent her because she had made haste and come quickly and had managed to intercede. 34. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him. And he said unto her, Go up in peace to your house. See, I have hearkened to your voice, and I have accepted your person. David has told the wife of Nabal now that go back to your house because I've listened to you and I've accepted what you've done. And behold, 36, and Abigail came to Nabal and behold, the held, he held a feast in his house like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him for he was very drunken Wherefore she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. So when she comes back to Nabal, we find that Nabal, he's having a feast, he's throwing a party. And Nabal is the end time where they're, they're having a feast and they're making merry. They think they've got it made, and, but we see that they're Nabal, the fool, and he's drunken. This is the spirit that God has sent in the end time, the spirit of drunkenness. And he's made everybody to drink, and there's no one who has escaped. Wherefore she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. So in the morning we see that she is going to make known to Nabal the truth that what she has done, how she has truly come out and stopped David from coming down and slaughtering him. 37, and it came to pass in the morning... When the wine was gone out of Nabal, that his wife told him these things, and his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. So come morning, when Nabal sobered up a little bit, and she could make sense to him, she tells him, and when he hears it, he just freezes up. His heart dies inside. He can't believe that what he's done was going to amount to David coming down and destroying everything he had. 38, and it came to pass about 10 days after that the Lord smote Nabal so that he died. So we find 10 days later after she tells him, 10 being the law of God, the commandments of God, that God smote Nabal, this fool, and he smote him with the law so that he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, 
and hath kept back his servant from evil, evil, and the evil doing of Nabal, hath the Lord returned upon his own head, and David sent and spoke concerning Abigail to take her to him to wife. So now God has exacted judgment upon Nabal for David, and David has heard about it. And David says, Blessed be God, because God stopped David from going down and killing Nabal, and God has shown David that I'll take care of this for you if you will be obedient to my word, then I'm going to do this for you. And he kept David from his evil action, and he returned the evil of Nabal, this fool, the one who wouldn't hear God, wouldn't listen to God, the foolish one who acts foolishly, chasing idols, chasing after the words and the works of men, do not obey the law of God, God exacts the law upon you in the end time and you'll be destroyed and your wife she'll be given to another and this is basically what's going to happen here David had sent his men to take Abigail Nabal's wife to himself and when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel 40 they spoke unto her saying David hath sent us unto you to take you to him to wife so David sent his servants down there to get Abigail, the joy of God, and bring her back to him to wife. And she arose and bowed down, 41, her face to the earth, and said, Behold, your handmaid is a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. And we're going to find out that what she says is exactly what's going to happen in the end time. How God will take these that have followed the idolatry and turn them and use them to serve those true servants of God. Those that have followed his word, those that have listened to him, those that have kept his commandments, these shall serve you. 42. And Abigail hastened and arose and rode upon an ass with five damsels of hers that followed her, and she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. So we'll see that Abigail hurried up. She jumped on her little donkey there. And she rode with her five damsels. This five being the grace of God. Because she's off with her helpers to serve David and his servants. She herself will become David's wife. 43. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel. And they became both of them his wife. So David now has took another wife, Ahinoam, and this is brother is favor. Because this is going to be, and Jezreel is God sows. This is the place where God sows his seed, and he finds favor there that God acts as this one who goes before you, showing himself mighty and powerful to all the earth. Because we'll find that this is the end time prophecies. God is going to raise up and show himself magnificent and powerful over all belief and understanding. That all might come to one understanding. Now Saul, 44, had given Michal, his daughter, David's wife, to Pauti, the son of Laish, who was of Galim. So we remember Michal. David's first wife, she's the one who dressed up the little idol there and stuck it in the bed and put the goat hair on it and deceived her father. Tricked him. Miko means who is like God. Palti, her new husband, is my deliverance. Galem, departing. And Laish is the lion. So God here is trying to tell us now his deliverance is departing as a lion coming up off its prey. And we'll find out that this is going to be the prophecies later on of what's going to happen because Judah will be this lion that's coming up off its prey. All right, we're going to move on to chapter 26.